Hey everyone, welcome back to Hustle is for Life Motivation. I am Talal and I have an awesome show for you guys today. I have somebody who is absolutely incredible joining me today. His name is Jonathan Herbert and he's done just some really amazing stuff. He's been earning millions of dollars um, in his family business. He then moved on and did a lot of work with affiliates and joint ventures. And at the moment, he's working on multiple different projects, which is just incredible. And I literally can't wait to dive into this conversation because he has a lot of value to add to us. He talks a lot about finding your purpose. He talks about you know, living in alignment. He talks about how you need to form connections and add value to others and take care of the people around you and come from a place of giving, which is everything that I believe in and this show stands for. So he is the perfect fit. So with that, please help me welcome Mr. Jonathan Herbert. Jonathan, good to have you here, brother. Hey, thank you. For, thank you so much for having me, man. Really appreciate it. It's a pleasure to have you on, brother. So we, we've been talking before we jumped on and, and actually started recording this thing. And uh, it, it's just incredible. The conversation went in lots of different places. And uh, you were just genuinely, you know, trying to learn more about me just the way I was trying to learn about you. And it was really great to see somebody who wanted to add value and connect. But I am really curious to know, as uh, I'm sure the audience is as well, what is it that got you started down this path and what has your journey been like so far you, you're talking about originally or within the last few years well let's let's talk about let's talk about the last few years um and then if you want to go deeper then obviously we can go all the way back okay yeah yeah, yeah. no no worries no worries um about five years ago i was at a moment in my life where everything I thought was amazing and really cool and special just came crashing down around me. And it wasn't that it really looked that way on the outs from the people from the outside of me, but internally I was looking at the world around me differently and I had really just forced myself out of the world that I've been living to at that point, which was connecting and joint ventures and hooking people up and doing really big deals. Mm. Um, and a couple of the deals I did didn't pan out. And I literally, I think a ego got in the way, but B um, one of the experiences was big enough that I just didn't want to be involved in any of this anymore. No joint ventures, no, connecting, no talking to people. I literally drew away from my friends. I think there was one friend I really hung out with after that and everyone else I just kind of pulled away from. It wasn't their fault. There was nothing they did wrong. It was just me really having to, losing my, losing my spirit and my drive to go anywhere. Mm. Like seriously, like it, suddenly I felt like this cave went over my head and I'm in this cave and, and there's not even a, like a cap to it. It's like screwed on. So it's like dark everywhere around me. And that, ha that happened to me. And it took about three years until a couple of friends of mine invited me to an event uh, named uh, Brian Finale and Todd Schlomer. They own a company called My Lead System Pro. And they are in the network marketing side of the world, which is not a world that I'm in. I dive in myself, but they're still good friends. They live here locally in Austin. Just go givers completely. And they invited me to their event called Living the Dream that they do once a year here in Austin. And they, their specific purpose for inviting me was that they knew where I was before and they'd seen where I'd gone and they really truly had a desire for me to go there. And if anything, if I showed up, just to even show up at the last speaker of the last day. They gave me VIP access to everything but just said, we just want you to show up to this if you show up to anything. Mm. And so I did, I came to the, came to the events and the speaker at the last show at the last day, his name was Dr. Joe Dispenza. And Dr. Joe Dispenza was actually featured in a movie way back in the day called What the Bleep Do We Know? Mm -hmm. And Joe Dispenza, what he did is he actually shows you for about an hour using a PowerPoint to show you images of your brain and the neurons and how that all works and how it actually is all impacted by your thoughts and your mind and how that actually creates what the reality is in your brain that you see that which which then ripples into the reality you see around you and then he proceeded to take us through a 45 minute long meditation and in that 45 minute long meditation um it was a visual meditation 
And as I was going through the meditation, I started to feel higher and fire. My spirit started going out more and more. And then when, by the time it was over, I felt high as a kite. Even though I wasn't drinking, I would, it, it just felt like so excited and invigorated. And in that moment, I made a decision, second decision to do two things. One is to find his stuff on Audible, which I did for like $7.50 for one of his meditational walkthroughs. Wow. Um, this was I Am Placebo, and there's like two versions, and I just took the shorter version. And then the other thing was I decided that I need to work out once a week. Um, not work out once a week. I need to start working out regularly because at that moment I thought, shit, if I can feel this good from one 45 minute minutes with J Dr. Joe Dispenza here in a room full of all these other people, what can I do if I started meditating and was able to do that every day for 100 days and started working out regularly? Mm. And so in order for me to work out regularly, because I was lazy and I am still lazy inherently when I can be, um, I hit up a friend of mine who I knew would keep me accountable and who had actually been inviting me to go work out with him for like the last eight years. He's a buddy of mine who uh, I've known for about 10 years. And about eight years ago, he started a company called Six Pack Shortcuts. And his name is Daniel Rose. And um, I hit him up and he was like, whatever, dude, you don't want to work out. And so it took me about three weeks of hounding him. And finally, I was like, fine, man, we'll do this. And we'll do it on Tuesday night. I was like, cool. So I drove up to his offices. He has his own private gym there. And we started working out. And two years later, I'm still working out with him every week. The benefit awesome. to that is the consistency of the workout, which means that if I do not continue to work out throughout the rest of the week, that the next time I see Dan, I'm going to go through such hell in that workout. <laughs> my body is going to hurt crazy for the next three days. I'm going to barely be able to walk, and my wife's going to be making fun of me. So it's better and making fun funny mainly because she knows that I should have made better choices throughout the last week. Um, so about 100 days after meditating, I suddenly had this epiphany. I came out of visual meditation, I remember, and I was sitting in my gym parking lot, actually. Um, and suddenly it hit me. I was like, I know what my purpose is at this very moment. And one is that I am okay for the first time in my life to work for anybody else. Number two, I want to thrive, not just survive. I have a family. I have a three-year-old daughter. At that time, my daughter was like a year old. I, you know, I want to thrive, not just survive. And then the other one was that I want to work on something bigger than myself where the money wasn't the objective. It may be the objective in that specific project, but the overall goal was in a much more, more higher level. And three days later, a good friend of mine reached out to me and named Fred Lamb. And he said, hey, dude, I have an e-com company that's actually a software-driven educational company based on my years doing e-com. And so I have all these affiliates on board. I want to know if you can want to come on board and just manage them for me. We can go from there. And, and uh, I was like, it was almost like a sign. It was like, so in sync because until three days before I wasn't having people hitting me up left and right because I pulled away so long that when he did I was like oh my god it was just such a uh, it was it was like a confirmation you know anytime anything happens where it's like you know it seems serendipitous I just look at it as a confirmation that you're on the right track you know what I mean because it's like it's like where the stars are aligning and that's supposed to be and so I started working for Fred and uh, did affiliate management for him for about a year and uh, a year and a half, or a year and two months, or a year and three months. And then uh, he went on to do branding play, and I went on to find new offers out there that actually fit a specific rule, which is A, whatever it is, it's got to benefit the end user. B, it's got to have a lot of future potential and where else it can build out and how it can grow. C, it's got to actually convert. You know, you can't just put an offer out there and not convert. If you ever have an offer you're going to put out there that doesn't convert, you're just building your reputation in a manner that may not be the best for you. So I would highly suggest you ask a person to do a test for you first and even offer them to pay that. Ask them, hey, ask them, hey what would it be, what would it be, what's your, what are you happy with when you promote a product? What, what kind of click? EPC. Once you find that out, say, okay, can you send a portion of your list? And if you don't hit that EPC, I'll make up the difference to you in cash. But if it does beat that EPC, then just promise me you're going to hit the rest of the list. So now you're taking the risk away, plus you're offering them something to reward them for working with you, and plus you're testing out your offer with a smaller list. So, so what I'm, where I'm going for is, so, so the offer's got to convert, and then it's, for me personally, I like offers that convert in every niche, or one offer that converts cross-niche. 
not just one specific niche because the pool and playing field in one niche is so small compared to as a connector and as a person who talks to people and really, you know, wants to, you know, grow the world around me in connection. It's much simpler for me to talk to people in all different sectors. Now, the other thing I started doing this year too was, is that I meet with really cool, unique, talented people about once a week, um, whether it's for coffee or whether it's on the phone. Um, and I, and when I talk to them, I'm like, Hey, look, I want to meet with you, but I also want to set this up as a weekly thing. And here's why. Because I find, and, and some of these people are, have nothing to do with what I do. They're, they're successful in other ways. They could have huge viewership on YouTube, or they could have, um, you know, a ma- they could be a master tribe builder. Um, you know, they're, they're, or they could be an amazing connector. Like, or they, they have a freaking event planning company that has a software that's created such an understanding of their, all of their leads that they can find anomalies behind who's who and where. Or they are connected with big Fortune 500 companies, and that's what they work with on a regular basis of consultation. But I meet with these people, and we talk for about an hour or so, and it's more just to, them to share with me what's going on with them, and, and either me sharing my insights or me sharing with them what's going on with me, and then they're sharing their insights. What it does more than anything, it helps me create more, it, it restructures my critical thinking in my brain, which opens up a lot more opportunity in this world for everything I'm working on currently, because if you ever learned that if you if you ever learned or figured out that you probably have your best ideas in the shower, not while you're working on what you're working on, well, this yeah. is just another way to do that same process. I'm mm. not showering with it, but still, it'll, <laughs> it allows for uh, a a great way to um, tap into that bigger consciousness that we're all a part of, in my opinion, and when you tap into that bigger consciousness that's outside the regular thinking that you really run on, suddenly you're opening up yourself up to a much more altered state of reality that, that you're more shaping around you based on who you surround yourself with. I used to think about oh, the sum of who you surround yourself with, that's bullshit. But now I realize it's not. It's not really the sum of who you surround yourself with. It's what kind of quality time you're spending with those you're surrounding yourself with. Just like it's not about who you know. It's about... Who knows you and how do they know you and what do they say about you behind your back? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Agree with everything you said there, Jonathan. And I think you touched upon so many amazing things and I want to go down, you know, some of those rabbit holes with you because I think you, you've got some really amazing insights to share on those things. The first one was obviously losing your purpose. I mean, you were working in your family business, really successful stuff went south and you kind of lost that purpose, that passion. And then you went to a, a journey essentially to rediscover that. And for a lot of people out there, I think they can relate because either there's somebody who have also lost their purpose or they're just searching for it in the first place. And I'm wondering if you have any advice for people, for those people on what they can do, what, what is it that will help them either rediscover their passion and purpose or maybe just find it in the first place if they never found it before, you know, based on your own personal experience, of course. Simple. Get the hell out of your comfort zone. Mm. When I got really comfortable wallowing my crap, it was mainly my biggest issue was I was not doing anything different that day than I did the day before. Once I started doing, like meditation was not easy for me, by the way. I have ADD and my brain's all over the place. Now you're asking, I'm, I'm making myself commit to 40 minutes every day of my, you know, meditation. It was not an easy process. It was, it was a challenge, and that's the point, is that while also during that five years when I was away from, during that three years before I made a pivotal change in my life that allowed me to receive purpose, I wasn't, um, I wasn't doing anything. Like literally, I wasn't doing anything different. So like, like I said, like the meditation was one thing, and the other thing was uh, working out for me. That was what worked for me. But each person's different too. It's more about maybe imagining, okay, what things could I do? What If I were to just test it out for 30 days or for a month or two, what specific things could I do that I wouldn't be comfortable doing, but I know they'd be for my betterment? Because, mm. okay, when I go back, is that three years I didn't do anything? I literally forgot how to connect with people. Seriously. It wasn't I started making a point that I talked to like, okay, I, I meet people regularly every week, but I, I make it a point to talk to about four to five people a day. 
because that really helps me shape and relearn stuff I let go of because you will forget if you don't do stuff repetitively. While at the same time, you will never get out of where you are unless something clicks up here or your environment crazily shifts, radically shifts. And so that's what I'd say. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. And ladies and gentlemen, seriously, what Jonathan has said there was just pure gold. And I want to drive that home because seriously, he talked about breaking your normal frames of reference and exposing yourself to new experiences and new environments, which allows you to essentially get out of your comfort zone and either rediscover what is it that you are supposed to be living your life, uh, working your life uh, for, and also maybe find it in the first place if you never find your passion before. And he also talked about connecting with people, right? And learning from them because guess what? When you are in the company of other amazing people, it changes the filter through which you see the world. And that's something obviously Jonathan shared as well. And I just wanted to drive that home. It's just so powerful. Jonathan, let's go down that rabbit hole with, you know, connecting with people, forming relationship and networking. Obviously you are a very, very successful you know, networker, you have built relationships with very amazing people. You talked about the fact that it allowed you to get out of your normal frame of reference and, you know, almost get a different state of mind where you could see the world differently. Mm -hmm. How powerful has that been for you? And do you have any advice for people who are not sure how they can start connecting with other people. They are just hanging on with the same, you know, few family members, the same old friends. What can they do to start connecting with new people? Well, there's something called meetup.com. <laughs> yeah. That's a, uh, where they meetup.com is just a place to go to to find out every kind of group get together a gathering based on your specific interests. Because here's the thing is everyone, and I think what's great about meetup.com is that it's a great place to find pe other people who share a passion no matter what you're from, your background. If it's more of your, you're in the online world, you're trying to make money or whatever else, look for people that share that passion. And usually it's finding groups that have a meetup on a monthly basis. Because going to those allows you to then get to know people you've never known before. Mm. But also, you know, what I make it a point to do specifically if I've never been to a place is introduce myself, walk up to people, which is the most uncomfortable thing in the world for most people to do. Yeah. Walk up to anybody, no matter who it is, you can't just judge a person on their appearance. You just walk up to them, say who you are and say, Hey, you know, I came out here because I really wanted to get to know more people on this line because of this, this, and this. Be open and genuine. Most people are afraid to be open and genuine to put their, sorry, I got to plug in my computer real quick before it dies. Sure. They put their best foot forward, but they don't put their real foot forward. The mm. less genuine you are when you speak to somebody, the more likely you are to create a less of a connection that you could have had. Yeah. And in this world, we don't have time to waste on having a whole bunch of friends who just think they know us as something. You know? And so with, the, with meetup.com would be the way that I would say is probably the fastest way you start connecting with. The other places, you know, I, I don't do a lot of social media myself. I'm really guilty. I go on Facebook like once a week. I find that human interaction on Facebook isn't my greatest um, play. Um, so I mainly go to events or I go meet with people. And so when I go to events, like, so for example, you go to a meetup, you meet somebody cool, say, hey, I've started a new habit. And it is to meet with a person that's outside of my realm, what they're doing, but just someone that I jive with like a job with you and I just like to meet with you once a week for coffee or something like that and we just can talk you just share me what's going on in your work and vice versa and uh, start with one eventually if you meet with them enough they may be like hey I know somebody else like you can always say hey do you know other people that would be good for me to talk with so it's, it's so you're doing that same thing with them but the first thing I'd say before anything else is even as you're getting to know them make it a point to find out if there's anything that you hear from them or any cue they give you that there's a way you can help them because here's the thing. There's nothing worse than when I finish a conversation with somebody and they're like, Oh, just tell me anytime that you can tell me anything I can do for you and have a great day. And it's like so ungenuine because look, if you can't think in your own head about how you can help me and see where your vision is aligned with mine and basically say, okay, this is what I see. I can help you. And here's how then 
you're not really genuinely worried about who that person is or what they're about. You're just trying to get across and spit out what it is you want to say, in my opinion. Mm. But I'm pretty direct, so if you if you've known me, you'll know me to be that way. But yeah, so make it a point to get it and make it a point about make it about them. Mm. And you'll know if they're about themselves or if they're also giving too. Yeah. Very quick, it's easy to filter through and figure out who's just takers and who's also go-givers. Hmm. And it may take a meeting or two or three or four to know that, but eventually you're going to know what type of person that is. And if, they become, if they're a giver as well, holy crap, now you've expanded your reality by two as far as what can be done or reached in this world. Even, and for me, the other reason I do these weekly meetings with people is that now I'm talking to these amazing people are doing these great things. If I don't hold myself accountable to make sure I freaking am stellar that whole week and what I'm doing, no matter what that task is, then I know what, that at the end of the day, I'm going to talk to them again and my mind not be right where theirs is. And it's, it's, there's just something psychologically ex- inspiring and exciting about riding on that train with other like-minded people. Mm. I just, by doing that, I strove to do better. Not to just stay in what I thought was a comfortable space. I've just shifted and made this thing that was uncomfortable before my new comfortable space because it's working for me. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And this this channel is all about creating holistic success in all areas of your life. And what you shared there is obviously really, really powerful. And essentially it's a strategy that people can start implementing today to go and start connecting with new people and form relationships. And, you know, just the way, you know, when we jumped on, you know, we were asking questions, very similar questions to each other in terms of what are you talking, you know, what are you working on right now? What's your main challenges? What are you excited about? What are your main goals for 2018? And those are all amazing questions that you know the audience can go and use with the people they connect with for the first time to just break the ice and start a conversation and also it gives you a chance by asking those questions to learn what they are working on and find a way to help them and you know see if you can you can actually go ahead and take this relationship further so really really powerful stuff I think you also learn what kind of a person their character that person is Mm. like when you talk when I asked you what you did and how you do it as you were explaining to me the way you connect with people and the things you do with people I felt like you were talking exactly the way that I do it so I just felt that like direct alignment very quickly and that's the thing is you won't run across people all the time they're that way but you're going to run across a certain level of like like energy or something like that you know yeah yeah so yeah awesome Awesome. And Jonathan, the other thing you mentioned uh, there was meditation and what a profound effect it's had in your life. And I absolutely believe in having, you know, daily rituals, daily habits. And you talked about two of them. One is obviously working out. um, And the other one is meditation. Now, the crazy thing is that, you know, pretty much 90% of the guests that have come on, maybe even more, that I've interviewed on the channel, they always talk about those things. I mean, they talk about other things as well that they have in terms of their habits and daily rituals, but definitely those two things, like they do, they have, you know, a workout routine and they meditate pretty much every single day. So it's really, really amazing. And I'm just wondering what's your experience been like with meditation? I know you said it's not been easy for you to, you know, start meditation. Um, and lots of people find that, but how, how do you think it affected you and how does it help you to perform at a high level? Well, it, when I meditate, I'm suddenly taking myself away from the world around me, whether it's the TV, the camera, the phone, all our distractions, right? The lights even. And I'm pushing that all away to a, go to a private space of just nothingness. <laughs> Where's this plane? <laughs> that nothingness is almost like, it's like, it's almost like I'm defragmenting my brain. Yeah. It's like hitting a reboot. Like, you know, when you reboot your computer, it's like that. Cause I, I manage it regularly as well. So I know exactly where you're coming from. Yes. And so doing that in the morning then makes it that all those things were going on in my mind the night before. Cause we all have internal chatter. I'm sure some more than others, but um, this, this kicks that chatter out of there so that like, and I, 
I don't meditate every day anymore. I meditate more once every like three or four days. And it's more based on what I've got coming up because I found that navigation, and and I know it's a good daily routine. I'm not perfect at that daily routine yet. Um, After the first hundred days of every day in the road doing it, what I am great at now is realizing when to do it. Mm. It's working for me. And I find anytime I've got anything big going on, anytime I've got to meet with somebody, anytime I've got something going on that is going to require a lot of mental focus, the best favor I can do for myself is to meditate beforehand because then when I face that thing, I don't have any of the other stuff that's piling, been piling up in my head. And suddenly everything feels easy to just move forward and push on that specific task because I don't feel like I have all this other stuff trying to crush against me that I have to do as well. Yeah. Just, yeah. So, but there is a habit I do do. Mm. every night with my wife and that is at 6 30 at night actually my wife and i rotate every night who makes dinner so at 6 30 at night we sit at the table with our daughter to have dinner our three-year-old daughter have dinner every night of the week no matter what's going on awesome awesome i love that i love that yeah. so every day i take about three hours between my daughter getting home from school and the time she goes down to mm. dedicate this with her because that that's time you're never gonna get back Mm, but it's yeah. also a great chance to learn how to be patient and a great chance <laughs> to really feel bad when you're not. And a really yeah. great chance to, you know, feel a lot of things your parents felt before that you didn't know until you had a kid. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. I've never loved anything more in my life and I never thought I could. And I, I can't even watch movies that have anything bad happening to kids. Mm. Like, they get all sad. I'm like, I can't even go into that process. It's yeah. Totally different. Than kids. So anyway. Yeah. So, so that's probably my, that's the, like the top daily habit and I've been working out. But even then working out, I find is a form of meditation. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're essentially zoning out, right? Like you're going into it, you're just zoning out and that's, that's your main focus. You're, just work, you're focusing on your workout and everything else just, you know, goes into the background. And essentially that's what meditation does for you. For people who've never tried it, I'll highly encourage you to go ahead and do it because it really helps you essentially just hit the reboot system button right so you come back to ground zero and then that's a chance for you to then build up and go ahead and tackle other things but definitely that internal chatter and you know that that stress that you were having all the tension that had been built up it all comes down to zero and then you you can essentially start afresh if you ever have a lot of stuff in your head that you've got to work out take a walk for an hour Mm. and talk to yourself you literally come out of it with a lot of solutions and realizations that you never would have had. You've been sitting there with all the distractions around you. My yeah. dad, he walks five miles an hour and takes an hour and 50 minutes to walk nine miles each day. And he's 71. I can't wow. even keep up with him, but his wow. mental clarity is insane. Hmm. I can't walk an hour and a half two hours myself every day, but an hour I do. I do have a puppy, so I take him out a three-mile walk almost every night. Mm. So that's another form of getting your, out of your brain and doing something that allows you to really um, let go of the world around you and just really become centered. So, Awesome. Awesome. I love it. All right, Jonathan, just very briefly, because um, I'm conscious of your time, you obviously do a lot of work with joint ventures and uh, affiliates um, and you help entrepreneurs, you know, build their businesses and things like that. I'm wondering if you can share some of the insights uh, from your experiences with working with entrepreneurs in so many different sort of situations with JVs and, you know, affiliate programs in terms of what are some of the best practices that people really need to be employing in order to make sure that their JV uh, ventures and their actual affiliate programs are successful. It's like a buddy of mine, David Gonzalez, said once, good news fast, bad news faster. (laughs) Communication is key. Make sure when you talk to somebody who's interested in promoting that you get, you find out their best form of communication. Hmm. Anytime you get an email from somebody, look at how big the email is or short it is, and then try to mimic when you reply to keep it in that same space. A lot of people, they put way too much information into it. And by doing that, they're not just keeping the key data spots that you need to know about. And so if a person becomes overwhelmed, won't even read the whole thing. Mm. Um, But yeah, just communication is key. Making sure that uh, you have a system set up every step of the way 
ahead of time for any affiliate you deal with so you can actually follow that system and checklist as you get along with those different parts, whether it's somebody to promote your product and you are, um, you know, the next step is to make sure that they are signed up as an affiliate program. And then from there, getting their copy, getting what they need, getting their pick or bio, depending if it's a webinar. It's more about doing more up front as much as you can up front to prepare for that day that deal happens. So that A, you're giving a great sense of professionalism and B, you know, in the end, if they're, they, everything works out, that's how they're going to remember you. Hmm. Yeah. You're remembered your actions as doing joint ventures or connect or whatnot are all you're remembered on your actions, not on your words. Yeah. Yeah. Very so, true. So yeah, just be your word and, and, uh, be on par with people. And, uh, you know, I have a good friend of mine who's a doer. She's just so amazing what she does and she's just been able to create a great network and hope and partner with people that, you know, and part of people, and the only way she got all those opportunities is because she did joint ventures in a manner that she was like always on top. I mean, people would call her like in the middle of the night, she'd answer. I know that's drastic, but bigger affiliates need their hand held. They can't be treated like you, you got to treat everyone just like you would want to be treated and things will work out really well. Yeah. I'll keep that in your head. So that's all I have. I mean, yeah. unless there's more specific you're interested in. Mm, no, definitely. It's, it, it's, it's very powerful. Um, and you obviously talked about, you know, before, um, that you worked with, uh, you know, a company who really looked after their affiliates and that was something that was a, yeah. you know, a tick box well, for you too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's the other thing is if I'm ever going to work with anybody, mm. I want to know three things. One is that their offer converts Two, that the product has social, but that product actually works for its customers who apply it and use it. And then see that they take care of their affiliates so that, you know, if an affiliate promotes, I like to work with affiliates to, and help them promote their products that pay within three or four days instead of waiting thir the standard 30 days or, or if they are able to pay for them, they have to hold back so much percent. I like people who have their shit together as a business. Yeah. Cause you'll also find if you're a product owner out there who's looking for affiliates, that's a great way to incentivize somebody to promote now rather than wait and promote some other offer. But it also states that you have a real business where you're not depending on that money to come in so you can pay your bills and hopefully have enough left over to take care of those who took care of you. Yeah. It just puts off a whole different sign. So yeah, um, if, if anything you choose to do in this world, make sure that whatever it is, it benefits the end user. I'm telling you, if it doesn't, your, your soul and your heart will be crushed. Mm. I'm just, just saying. <laughs> Of course, of course. Yeah, no, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely right. Awesome. Well, guys, this has been a phenomenal conversation. I'm aware of Jonathan's times um, because obviously we booked this call for an hour and we've gone slightly over an hour. So I apologize for that. Uh, but Jonathan, where can people go to find out more about you and how can they help you? Um, well, if you want to find out more about me, I don't really have a space for you to go to other than... Uh Telling you that uh, if you want to talk sometime or if you feel alignment, uh, just send me an email. My email is uh, connect with connect with the letter U and then zero zero one at gmail.com. Okay. Um, you know, and because I like to connect with cool people who are doing really cool stuff, but also, um, you know, plug in the people. And I, I imagine that a lot of people that are watching this just have yeah. a very similar vibe. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. I'm happy to connect with them. Um, and see where I can help you. I don't really know how I can help someone specifically as much as I know that if we talk and we have a good alignment in our conversation, then it's a lot easier for me to help me see their, their, their need or that what they're doing from, from the perspective of looking at my network through their eyes, which makes it a lot simpler to uh, figure that out. So, yeah. Awesome. Uh, is, there, is there anything people can help you with right now? Uh, anybody who's, uh, anybody who's okay. Anybody who's looking for proven offers to promote, I have an offer that really well, does well. That's all I'm saying. And it converts cross niche in any niche. If you have something or you have a big list, you want to get paid very quickly on those kind of terms of three days after a promo. And you want to know that it benefits the end user and it has more than enough social proof. Then uh, hit me up. I'd be more than happy to plug you into this because um, you know, 
the biggest problem a lot of people have is either they want everyone to promote their offer or they don't know what to promote because there's just so much crap out there and you don't know how to, you don't know how to sift through the noise. So yeah. Cool. Awesome. Well, there you have it guys. Our amazing conversation with Jonathan Herbert. He came on, he added so much value and he had some amazing insights. Um, and this conversation was just really, truly, um, inspirational seriously like there was so much stuff that i picked on in terms of you know creating holistic success that johnson talked about in terms of exposing yourself to different environments you know breaking your normal points of reference making sure that you connect with new people people who are not even in your niche people who are working on different things but are successful in those things people who are go-givers and forming relationships and getting to know them and the power of meditation and daily habits you know working out making sure you take care of your body and your mind and making sure that you constantly grow and you reach out and get out of your comfort zone right like like we're all lazy including me right so it's important that we push ourselves challenge ourselves to go out of our comfort zone and guess what this is now the second quarter of 2018 what have you done to get out of your comfort zone that's my question for you comment below and tell us what have you done so far in 2018 to get out of your comfort zone now with that make sure you also subscribe to the channel because that's how you can stay up to date with all the other awesome interviews that are, we are going to have in the future and i will also encourage you guys to share this video with other people who you think need to hear these messages who need to be a part of these conversations and lastly i will highly encourage you to reach out to jonathan because he is absolutely awesome he's very giving very open and guess what he just added a ton of value to us and i'm sure that if you start a conversation with jonathan you will only get more value so with that jonathan thank you so much for being here uh it was awesome to have you on thank you cool all right guys take care hustle hard and i will be catching you in the next one